What it is, focus your homeboy first. Back again with another installment of this Put It On Something Special. As I continue to ask the question, who's the GOAT QB? Today, we are looking at the resume of the man who most consider to hold the title, and that is Tom Brady, okay? This man is the reason why I did this project. This man is the person who made me do the deep dive that I did, okay? See, I know for most of y'all out there, y'all say, what the hell? This shit is set in stone. What the hell are you even, it's not a question. This man is undoubtedly the GOAT. And if this was an individual sport, shit, I might be able to say that. But given the fact that it's a team sport, y'all, I wanted to look at it. It's the ultimate team sport, again, in my opinion. You really can't do anything in football without having, without having your teammates do their damn job. And so I wanted to look at this shit holistically and really get a, a look at Tom and all these other great quarterbacks throughout the history of the league, you feel me? And uh, hopefully y'all checked out all uh, episodes so far. If you haven't, make sure you go back and check those out, you feel me? Uh, but we're going to look at Tom's resume today. All right, but before we get into it, I need y'all to do what y'all see going down that very bottom, you know what I'm talking about, along with the uh, uh, description and, and the, the, the info about Tom's legendary career. Y'all going to see. I'm going to tell y'all ass to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It costs you nothing to hit that button. You feel me? I keep telling y'all, I am the man that's going to help you win the barbershop. I'm going to help you win your group tech. Me. First letter, you feel me? So keep fucking with me and fuck with all things IG Entertainment. But let's go ahead and get into Tom Brady's resume, man. It's, a, it's an incredible resume. All right. Tom Brady has played 22 seasons in the NFL going into his 23rd season. All right. That's from 2000 until the present. Uh, now, I don't know how Giselle feels about that. Okay, because like Tom was about to wrap this thing on up and then he said, nah, fuck that. All right, but <laughs> he played 20 years with the New England Patriots. He's played two so far with the Bucks, going into uh, year three with the Bucks. All right, this man is known for winning. That's what he's primarily known for, okay? When you compare him to his contemporaries uh, like Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning has more MVPs. Uh, Drew Brees has comparable stats. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has more athleticism, bigger, better arm, uh, more mobile. Tom got the win. Okay. He is tied for most titles as a quarterback in NFL history. Now, I told y'all before, y'all go back and check. Some of the earlier joints in the project. You know, Otto Graham got seven of these things too, people. Okay? Otto Graham got seven titles too. And I think Tom knows that. Like, this motherfucker competitive, and I think he wants to break that, break that tie, okay? But he does have the most Super Bowl wins. Remember, in uh, this over 100 years of the NFL, it hasn't always been called the Super Bowl, okay? So in the Super Bowl era, he does have the most Super Bowl wins, but he's still tied with Otto Graham for the most titles. Uh, he's also known for his accuracy. Uh, he's known for his leadership. He's been known for his work ethic. People forget that don't know football. Uh, folks that know football know this man was a six-round draft pick. You know what I'm saying? It, it ain't like he came out of Michigan as the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, no doubt, first round, uh, nothing like that. You know how Trevor Lawrence just came in this bitch? You know, everybody was talking about he's a prototype or even like, remember Andrew Luck? Everybody was ranting and raving over Andrew Luck. Oh, shit, his contemporary, Peyton Manning. Peyton, Peyton Manning was one of those guys, no doubt. You got to go with him. Man, Tom Brady was a six-round draft pick. And if you see his tape, uh, what, from the combine, you know, his pictures, been a meme, Slow ass 40 run. 
the man bust his ass and became who he who he is today. All right, uh, he's known for his longevity. All right, and to keep it 100, now I'll tell y'all right now, all these quarterbacks that playing these lengthy careers today wouldn't be able to do that shit before they change these rules. This is a 15 yard penalty. You can't touch them there. You can't uh, uh, go below the knee. That's Tom Brady rule when they fucked them up that time. Uh, you can't drive them into the ground no more. That's Aaron Rodgers' rule. I don't want to say I was Vikings that fucked him up. Uh, you really can't touch these motherfuckers no more, okay? So I don't think any of these boys would play like that for real, for real, if it wasn't for these rule changes. All that said, under these same rule changes, Peyton didn't play as long as Tom. Uh, Drew held on to a comfortable time. Drew played 20 years, but uh, y'all saw how Drew went out. Drew went out, shit, he was fucked up. So I'm just through 5,000 last year, if I'm not mistaken. You know, it's a little league and pass. So uh, he's known for his longevity. All right, and, and you got to get it to him. Uh, he's known for his competitiveness, as I spoke of previously. Motherfucker wants to win, wants to goddamn get you. If you somebody was talking shit, a DB or something, he tried to target the motherfuckers. You know, somebody, uh, I want to say this gets the Steelers. He got a famous clip of one of them still was talking shit, and they hit him on a bum, and Tom ran out there and talked shit to his ass. Uh, and he's known for being clutch. Now that him being clutch really started the uh, comparisons to Joe Montana. You know, Joe Montana known for being cool, Joe cool. You know, to my those situations. And uh, early in his career, when he was still a game manager. Okay, that main first few years, this man was a game manager. Now they're gonna uh, play great defense, uh, primarily. But even then, he was clutch. If not score a touchdown, he gonna get your ass in a good field goal uh, position, and arguably the goat kicker, Adam Vinatieri, we're gonna take that bitch to the high. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but let's get into the full resume, man. Tom Brady won three MVPs so far in his career. Now, some argue that he should have got it last year uh, over Aaron Rodgers, my quarterback. Y'all know I'm a Packer fan, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, he will undoubtedly go into the Hall of Fame. And I'm not a betting man. I leave it to my brother, Tim DJ. But I might be willing to bet that when Tom Brady's name comes up, that he'll be a unanimous selection. I'm willing to bet, okay? Only thing I can think of that folks may hold against him is Deflate Gate uh, and Spy Gate, okay? If you've been under a rock and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, y'all know Deflate Gate where he was accused of deflating balls before the game. She ended up getting a suspension because of it. Uh, and uh, Spygate, which was on Belichick, uh, but you know, they folks claim he was recording defensive signals, and of course, who the defensive signals gonna help it, it'll help Brady, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so maybe you'll have some voters hold that against him, okay? So if, if that's the case, I wouldn't want to bet on it, but he's gonna be close to unanimous, if not unanimous, okay? Uh, as I alluded to, he's known for winning, y'all. He has seven Super Bowl rings, okay? He won in 2001, 2003, 2004, 2014, 2016, 2018, and 2020, okay? Six of those rings with the New England Patriots, one with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, okay? And that's that one. Well, no, I ain't going to say that. That's the one that really made folks with his gold talk. I want to say when he broke that when he broke that tie with Joe Montana, you know, Joe Montana was sitting on four. So when he broke that tie and got him uh, five of those things, I think that's what really made folks start hollering go. But then when he got that one in Tampa, that made it like undoubted in most people's eyes because he separated from uh, Bill Belichick at that point. You feel me? Uh, so seven Super Bowl victories, and that's in 10 appearances. 
right, 10 appearances. So again, 2001, 2003, 2004, 2007, 2011, 2014, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2020. All right. Uh, that's just getting it done. That's getting it done. So that's nine appearances with the Patriots, one with the Bucks. All right. He has a playoff record of 35 and 12. He's thrown for 13,049 yards in his playoff career. Um, that translates into 277.6 yards per game in the playoffs. In terms of touchdowns, he's thrown for 86 in the playoffs. He's thrown for 39 interceptions in the playoffs. Uh, his playoff passer rating is 90.4. Uh, his regular season record is a remarkable 243-73. and 73. Y'all know them boys used to own that AFC East up there. Uh, in terms of regular season passing touchdowns, like I told y'all previously, he holds the record with 624. Season get ready to start, so of course that number's gonna change. I uh, regular season interceptions, he's thrown 203 so far as I take. Uh, that's tied for 29th. Passing yards, he has the record with that as well, as I alluded to, with 84,520 yards. Um, that number will change just shortly. The season fastly approaching. Uh, his regular season pass rating is 97.6. That ranks eighth. Uh, regular season passing yards per game, as I tape, is 265.8. Uh, rushing yards, I know he ain't known for running the ball now. 664. But he does have 27 rushing touchdowns. He is another one of these masters of the sneak. Tom Brady will call a damn sneak. Okay, he don't give a fuck about that. Uh, and that's six foot four, you know what I'm saying? He got what it takes to goddamn uh, run a pretty good sneak. All right, but let's look at the best thing about this project. Absolute best. Now, I'm seeing nobody else do this, what I'm doing here, okay? And that's by taking a look at how many top 10 scoring defenses did he have. And I've done this with uh, all these QBs. All right, uh, how many top scoring defenses he had? How many top rushing offense? You know, somebody looking at the coach, uh, looking at uh, notable offensive teammates they had, okay? So I found this to be remarkable, mind-blowing, and it speaks to the greatness of Bill Belichick. I see a lot of folks trying to shit on Bill Belichick. But what I'm about to tell you right now speaks to the greatness of Bill Belichick. And Tom Brady's career, and it's been an illustrious career, he's had a total of 18 top 10 scoring defenses. 18 top 10 scoring defense. He only played 22 years so far, y'all. Okay? So he only had four years when he had a, a defense that was outside of the top 10 in points. All right. And this includes 2001, 2003, 2004, 2007, 2014, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2020. What's notable about those seasons? They made the Super Bowl every one of those seasons. His teams did. All right. Because that 2020 was with the Tampa Bay Bucks. So nine of the 10 times that Tom Brady went to the Super Bowl, he had a top 10 scoring defense. Okay, and in all of his victories for all seven Super Bowl wins, he had a top 10 scoring defense. All right, um, and take it a little step further, he's had three number one defenses in his career three that's in 2003, 2016, and in 2019. And a lot of folks get about the 2019 team because they acted like the Patriots were trash. Uh, when it's really he didn't really have the skill guys for real for real like that in 2019 to go with him uh, I want to say Grunk had set out that year in 2019 uh, I think it was whispers about him going to get traded to the the Lions and instead of being traded to the Lions Grunk said fuck that shit I'll retire so he didn't have his boy and we know that some of those young guys didn't show up so on the offensive side, from a skill standpoint, 
that's where the struggle was. But that 2019 defense was pretty damn good, man, including the damn uh, defensive player of the year that year in Stephon Gilmore. You know what I'm talking about? But uh, they get a bad rap. Uh, now, he did make the Super Bowl in 2011 with the 15th ranked defense. So, I mean, that proves he could make it without a top 10 scoring defense. But I'm just saying, defense win championships, and this motherfucker didn't have probably more top 10 scoring defense than, than anybody. Hell, most quarterbacks don't even get to no damn 18 seasons, let alone to have uh, 18 good defenses to go with them. You feel me? All right, in terms of top 10 rushing offenses, he's had eight over his uh, 22 seasons so far, okay? And that includes 2004, 2016, 2017, and 2018. Uh, he won the Super Bowl. He did number 13 ranked Russian offense in 2001. The number 28 ranked off, uh, rushing offense in uh, 2002. The number 27 ranked Russian offense in 2003. Uh, number 18 ranked uh, Russian offense in 2014. And number 29 in 2020. Okay. So, whereas I'm letting y'all know, they've been stacked. Been absolutely stacked defensively. But Tom Brady has been able to be the offense, uh, you know, for most of his run throughout his career. You know what I'm talking about? Because if you know anything about the Patriots, they treat that short passing game shit basically as an extension uh, of the running game. You feel me? And you hear that from a lot of teams, but I think nobody has been able to do it better than he has. You know, and we'll get into some of that when we talk about how he's been able to use tight ends and slot guys. Probably nobody's been better at that. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but let's talk about the coaches. He will be forever tied to this man. Just like um, Roger Starback is tied to Tom Landry. And just like Terry Bradshaw is tied to Chuck Noll. And Joe Montana is tied to Bill Walsh. Like Troy Aikman is tied to Jimmy Johnson. I can go on and on. This man will forever be linked to Bill Belichick. All right. Who is arguably the GOAT coach. I think most people would say he's the GOAT coach. Uh, just like most people say that Tom is the GOAT quarterback. Uh, he might be a unanimous pick for the Hall of Fame as well. But again, that Spygate and Deflategate that might get his ass too. He going to get in there. He going in there. Uh, y'all saw he the one that they had talking, you know, doing the hundredth year anniversary, and they were running down the players. Go watch that. That's some good shit. You love football? Go watch that. You see Bill Belichick first. You see him talk more than I've ever seen him talk ever. Okay, you see the man's personality. The man actually seems to be a pretty nice guy. <laughs> uh, he loves some damn football. He knows a lot of football. Uh, but that's real dope. So, but I'm I'm, I'm mentioning that show. Even though he's kind of gruff with the media, I think they fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? But somebody might hold Spygate against him, which is fucking fail. All right. But he has a career record as I tape 290 and 143, uh, six Super Bowl wins. Uh, he had a legendary run as a coordinator with the New York Giants. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, like he was. Lawrence Taylor's defensive coordinator. All right, he was working under Bill Parcells. All right, so this is just a football man. Uh, also, you got to give him credit for being a GM in New England. He's the one that buys the groceries and cooks. Okay, so all these stud defenses I'm telling y'all about, he's the one that brought in the players. He's the one uh comes up with the schemes. His hand been all over everything. He's known for getting getting rid of a player maybe a year too early, but rather than too late. A lot of lot of high quality guys that would let go 
in the name of continuing this thing or winning. You know, somebody, uh, some fan favorites he let go. Tried to let go of Tom much earlier than when he even got up out of that bitch. And they ain't no win- <laughs> winning more afterwards. Uh, he's known for wanting smart guys. You know, because then I, I will, I, I really do appreciate this about what I've heard from. I've heard this uh, from pretty much every player that I hear get interviewed that play for Bill Belichick, that he doesn't just stick with one way of doing things. The game plan may change from week to week based on your opponent. And I heard him speak to a book that I've read, and you should read as well, Sun Tzu's Art of War. Uh, where basically you identify your opponent's uh, weaknesses and you try to exploit that. Um... And you try to, you know, cover up your weaknesses. And if that's your mindset, if that's how you're going to get down, you really do have to take uh, a different approach to coaching. You can't just be set in stone because week to week, uh, your opponent's weaknesses may be different. And you have to exploit something different. You know what I'm talking about? So I think they've done a hell of a job uh, in New England. But then again, they'll spy gate in the play gate. I mean, that's there. It was always rumors that I don't know who, who was it, the Rams, maybe? Uh thought that motherfucker was stealing their shit, and a lot of folks been claiming that. You know, that's part of the story. You can't talk about these guys without mentioning that. You feel me? But uh it is what it is. You ain't taking no rings off their motherfucking fingers. You feel me? Uh, when Tom got on down there to Tampa Bay, uh, he played the first two years for Bruce Arians, okay? Who actually has a great record, 80 and 48 record, but he got a late start, man, as, as a head coach. And he's been in the game a long time as a coordinator. He's an offensive guy. Uh, but got a late start, man. He didn't get a head coaching job. He was 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? And, and maybe that has played a, a role in him moving up to the front office in Tampa and letting Ty Bowles take over, but I don't know. Seemed like there was some friction between him and Tom. And Tom now, man, Tom in his mid-40s, he dealt with a gruff-ass coach that chews his ass out all the time for his whole career. He ain't trying to deal with this shit no more. Uh, so I think that had something to do with it. I think it was a, him coming out of re, the brief retirement was probably contingent on uh, Bruce Arians going ahead and laying it down. But uh, we'll see how it goes with Ty Bowles the, this year. But let's get into some of these notable offensive teammates that he had, man. All right? And I, I got to start here. And that's with Randy Moss. Hall of Fame wide receiver, class of 2018. Played with Brady from 2007 to 2010. Uh, he's arguably to go wide receiver. Now, I got Jerry Rice, but if you get uh, Jerry and Randy drunk in a room and they get to talking that shit about whose career was better and all that kind of stuff and who just, just who's better than the other, shit, Randy might talk that talk, okay? Motherfucker ran with a 4 2 four, three, he six, four, jump out of the gym. They called him the freak. You know, Tom Isaac, four, four-time All-Pro, 1998 Rookie of the Year. He's on the All-2000 team. Uh, he led the league in receiving touchdown five times, including twice with Brady. Okay, now that first year that he got with Tom Brady was magical because see, up until that point, Brady never had that ooh we guy. You know, some like oh. Uh, Peyton Manning had Marvin Harrison. He had Richard Wayne. And so, I know me and my homies, we always would look at it like, man, what the fuck would Brady do if he had one of them? You know what I'm talking about? So, when he was able to get hold to a random Moss, them boy went dumb. Moss set a record that year for most uh, receiving touchdowns in a year with 23. Brady set a then record for most uh, passing touchdowns in a year with 50. I think he had like only eight picks that year to go with that. 
them motherfuckers went undefeated that year in the regular season. And if you're a fan of my show, put it on some. Might be hard for you to believe this. I was going for the Patriots that year. I was. Now, of course, I was going for my Green Bay Packers as well, you know, to my, but I was wildly intrigued by the Patriots that year where they went 16 and 0 in the regular season. You know, to my, because I, I, lo- I love uh, history, I'm a student of history. So I wasn't alive for the 72 Dolphins. So I hear about them uh, and I see Mercury Morris and them, you know, to my, they be waiting to pull up every year. When the last undefeated team goes down, and I know Don Shula was the coach back then. They had Larry Zonka. I heard all that. But, man, this was the Patriots. This was Tom Brady. This was Randy Moss. That shit was crazy that year. The boy was going nuts. The mother got upset by the Giants, bro. Goddamn Eli Manning, Manning to uh, David Tyree. I don't know how the fuck that shit happened. Riding and Harrison right fucking there to try to knock that ball out. Dave Tyree just held that bitch on his damn head. That's one of the craziest plays I've ever seen. And then, you know, subsequently he tossed that bitch to oh, Plaxico. But that damn defense is what won that game. That damn defense was a motherfucker. You know what I'm talking about? Straight hand and all them boys. That defensive line where they could just rush four. And not have to blitz because Brady gonna see that shit. You know what I'm talking about? He gonna shit. He gonna burn your ass. But they can just rush four and play coverage. Gave yeah, their ass a chance. You know what I'm talking about? And with Brady being a mobile like that, she was sitting duck. I think he might have got sacked five times that game, so she like that. Uh, but that was a wild year. Really was a wild year. Now, we'll make this note about Moss breaking that record. Moss had 23 touchdowns in 16 games. He broke Jerry Rice's record of 22. Jerry Rice had that in in 12 games. The motherfucker had 22 touchdowns in 12 games. Okay, I want to say it's 1987, in which the teams played only 15 games for some reason. I had to go double check and figure out what the fuck that was about. But Jerry played on 12 of them and had 22 touchdowns. Crazy, but I digress. All right, Tom Brady also played with another guy he's going to be forever tied to. Another guy who's arguably the GOAT at his position, and that's Rob Gronkowski. All right, played with Tom Brady from 2010 to 2021. He didn't want to play with nobody else. All right, so much so that as I alluded to, he retired in 2019. He didn't want to go fuck around with, I want to say that was the Lions. They were saying they were going to ship him off to. All right. This man going to be a first first ballot Hall of Famer. He's a four-time All-Pro. He's on the All-2010 team. He led the league in touchdowns in 2011. Led the league. Not led tight ends. Led the league in touchdowns in 2011. This man is a matchup nightmare. Come on, man. This motherfucker big as shit. So, uh, uh, DB, what the fuck you going to do? You know, he just go up and high point the ball. Uh, you a linebacker, he de- he deceptively fast. You know what I'm talking about? He look like he struggles to run, but that motherfucker be getting where he need to go. All right. Uh, he went over 1,000 yards four times in his career. He has over 9,000 uh, career yards and 92 touchdowns. That's with the injuries and all. 92 touchdowns. And this man was an elite blocker. I love the tight end position, bro. Damn, I need me a stud t- tight end up there in Green Bay. I hope Tanya ain't going to give me some. Because that tight end, Grunk shows you what you can do with a stud tight end, bro. That tight end is willing to block. Okay, see, unlike I mentioned Jimmy Graham in my discussion of Drew Brees. Make sure y'all go check that out if you have it. Jimmy Graham wasn't known as a blocker for real, for real. Gronkowski get down on your ass and block for real, man. You know what I'm saying? And then that really helps uh, when you're trying to scheme shit up and be more deceptive. You can't just say, okay, when he's on the field that, oh, this is a passing play. You know what I'm saying? You you, you might not know what's coming. All right? But uh, Brady also played with another guy. 
who's arguably the GOAT at his position. And I'm talking about that slot now. And that's Wes Welker. Okay. Wes Welker played with Brady from 2007 to 2012. Uh, he led the league in catches three times. Led the league in catches three damn times. Okay. He had years for my fans and football guys. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. You looking for who going to get those targets? This man had years of. Look at these targets now. 174, 173, 162, 149, 145. That's crazy. That's. Man, that's fucking crazy. He had five seasons with over 100 catches. He went over 1,000 yards five times. Where's Welker? Put this man in the hall, bro. Cole Prime, I'm sorry, man. I know what you're talking about. But for that slot, and we see how integral the slot is. Coach, you just got Jack State University a, 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 a stud slot guy in Kevin Cole. You know the value of that slot. I ain't say I ain't saying put Wes in the same room with Jerry. Now maybe, yo, maybe you write about the upper room and shit like that. You know what I'm talking about? Put them boys on the top shelf, top floor. But let this man in the building. That man put in work. You feel me? That man put in work. All right. Another guy who he might say from the Patriots that he has a claim to be the, the GOAT slot guy is Julian Edelman. Now, he played with Brady from 2009 to 2019. Uh, he's another target monster. He had years of 159 targets, 153, 151. He caught over 100 balls. Uh, well, he caught 100 balls twice. Uh, caught over 90 balls twice. Uh, he was over 1,000 yards three times. All right. Uh, so, Wes got him in regular season numbers but that motherfucker Edelman had three postseason runs where he went down okay and all three of these postseason runs did result in Super Bowl victories all right in 2014 the man had 93.7 yards per game during that run in 2016 the man had 114 yards per game during that run and then in 2018, the man had 129.3 yards per game during that uh, Super Bowl winning run. And he ended up getting the Super Bowl MVP. All right, so a fuck showed up when he was needed most. So he might tell Julian, again, put them in the room, get them drinking good. And I want to hear him and, him and Wes Welker talk about shit, who really did this shit the most. Shit. That boy, that might say, hell, man. Where's you don't want to see me, cuz? You feel me? All right. But let's get into some of these forgotten Patriots a little bit. Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon. Folks, forget that. He played with Brady from 2004 to 2006. Uh, and in that first year with the Pats, this man ran for over 1,600 yards, man. Okay? He ran for at least. 12 touchdowns in all three seasons with the Patriots. And he was a part of that 2004 Super Bowl winning team. You know what I'm talking about? He had, nobody brings him up when talking Patriots football. Probably outside of New England. I'm sure they bring him up. But, you know, a lot of people forget that. All right. Another one is Deion Branch. All right. He played with Brady from 2002 to 2005. Um, he had 998 yards. In 2005, it's a, it's a second guy that I, you know, doing my research, I saw that was two yards away from a thousand, bro. I, I hope they got that incentive money. All right. Uh, but he didn't have a thousand yard season with him. Uh, but he was part of their back to back Super Bowl winning teams. Uh, and he was Super Bowl MVP. All right. He was Super Bowl MVP in one of them joints. So, Deion Branch, another forgotten member of the Patriots dynasty. Now, somebody who's not forgotten, but he's turned out to be infamous, and that's Aaron Hernandez. He played with Brady from 2010 to 
2012. Y'all know the talent. Y'all saw his college career. You saw the talent there. You saw what the Patriots were starting to do with him and Grunk up there in New England running uh, uh, double tight end sets that was shit, basically. How you gonna stop it? The only thing that could stop that shit was injuries to either him or Grunk. Uh, he had one year where he had 113 targets, uh, 79 catches, 910 yards, seven touchdowns, and that was in 14 games in 2011. Tom Brady gonna use these tight ends and these uh, slot guys. You know, I will never forget. Uh, I think that was Chad Ochocinco, you know Chad Johnson was talking about his time there and you know why it didn't work out and basically he was just talking about how the Patriots offense worked inside out you know how uh, he was talking about how most offenses work outside in because you got your stud guys on the outside he was like no they shit work inside out and that makes a lot of sense given the number of targets that you see uh, that I've mentioned previously with tight ends and, uh, and slot guys you feel me but whatever the case, that shit been effective as a motherfucker. Maybe more teams should try that. I know my brother uh, Stanley was trying to tell me that's basically how the uh, Rams run their shit. And that's how Cooper Cup was so magnificent because it's harder to defend a motherfucker about that slot. You feel me? But uh, uh, Brady also had some uh, good offensive linemen to go with him on to my I don't know how many of these guys get in the hall, but you know, I keep telling y'all trying to show more love to the big boys up front. Okay. You can't play football without these guys. You just playing seven on seven or some shit. All right. So guys like Matt Light, Shaq Mason, Logan Mankins, David Andrews, uh Dan Connolly, all these guys been uh good offensive linemen. But I'd be remiss. If I don't mention these men, because these men are tied to Brady's story as well. Can't really talk about his great success without him. And that's his kickers. First one being, whom uh, many people would call arguably the GOAT kicker. And that's Adam Vinatieri. Played with Brady from 2000 to 2005. He's a three-time All-Pro. He's on the All-2000s team. Uh, four-time Super Bowl winner. Three with the Patriots. And then one, he went to the enemy. This man went to the Ops. How in the midst of the beef, the midst of the rivalry between the uh, 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 Patriots and the Colts, the rivalry between Manning and Brady, this man went over there with Manning with the Colts and got him another bowl over there. I wonder how they feel about that. I wonder if Brady get that motherfucker a hard time about that from time to time. Maybe not. But that man did really literally kickstart the Patriot dynasty. You know what I'm saying? After that tuck rule shit, Brady got a lot of luck with him too. Uh, okay, that was a fumble. Okay, that was a fumble. But they ain't got shit to do with Vinatieri. They kept the ball. That man ended up kicking that field goal in the snow. Might be the greatest kick ever. Some folks would say, uh, especially given the, the uh, uh, implications of it and the consequence. Shit, it's in the playoffs, all right. And in the snow like that, hell of a kick. Uh, numerous big kicks in Super Bowls. Like Brady's legacy, totally different if this man miss a kick. You know, one of these kicks. You feel me? Uh, and we've seen this during this project. You've seen that. Uh, Jim Kelly has a Super Bowl. He went to four straight Super Bowls and lost all of them. One of those he wins if his kicker makes a kick. You know what I'm talking about? Kickers are important. Uh, but another kicker that's tied to Brady actually played with Brady longer than Ben Terry did. Folks don't bring him up. And I need to change that because it's a Mississippi boy from my neck of the woods. He went to Madison Central High School. You know what I'm talking about? And that's Steven Gotzkowski. Okay? He played with Brady from 2006 to 2019. He's a two-time All-Pro. 
He's on the all 2010s team. So they went from having the guy who's on the all 2000s team to having the guy who's on the all 2010s team, okay? He's a three-time Super Bowl winner as well. So shit, Brady got three of them things with Benatieri. He got three of them things with Goskowski. So, I mean, that's blessed. And boy, Belichick was going to make sure he had him a damn kicker on deck. That was going to be solid. Now, Brady had to get your ass in position. But these boys had to make them kicks. You feel me? Now, I also don't want to end this without talking about some of his teammates uh, down there in Tampa Bay because that's clearly part of his story, you know, and part of his legacy. He won a Super Bowl down there, you feel me? So, got to start off with a guy who probably was a part of the attraction to Tampa Bay, even though now we know it's been revealed now that Tom Brady was almost with the Raiders. You know what I'm saying? Almost with the Raiders, but they say John Gruden shut that down. But once that was shut down, uh, it wasn't a bad move to go to Tampa at all. And this man is one of the main reasons for that. And that is Mike Evans. Okay. Mike Evans is one of those guys, y'all, that's going to go down in history as probably underrated. Because when you look at the stats that this man has put up for his career and the stats that he's going to uh, continue to accumulate uh, quite possibly, it's going to be fucking crazy. Okay? So he's played with Tom in both seasons. Now he's going to play with him again uh, uh, this season. Okay? And all this man has done in his career is have 1,000 yard season. Literally, that's all he's done. Every single year of his career, he's had a 1,000 yard season. So he holds that record for most consecutive 1,000 yard seasons to start a career. Mike Evans does, okay? This man uh, is tied with names like this for 1,000 yard season. I'm talking about total, not just to start the career, just total for a career. He's tied with guys like Steve Largent, Chris Carter, Isaac Bruce, Rod Smith, Marvin Harrison, Torrey Holt, Derrick Mason. Shout out to the Tennessee Titans. I wouldn't have thought Derrick Mason was on there. Shout out Derrick Mason. But Steve Smith, Reggie Wayne, Brandon Marshall. He's on that list with those guys. The only player, the only receivers in history who have more 1,000 yard seasons than Mike Evans are uh, Tim Brown, a Hall of Famer, Jimmy Smith, who should be a Hall of Famer, okay, T.O. Okay, and all these cats I'm naming got nine. Okay, so Tim Brown got nine, Jimmy Smith got nine, T.O. got nine, Larry Fitzgerald got nine. So if if Mike Evans goes and gets a thousand yards this year, he will tie all of those names. Okay, and then if he gets one this year, the only names that'll be above him are oh Randy Moss who has ten, and the goat Jerry Rice who has fourteen. That boy was different different okay but mike evans has more 1000 yard seasons than antonio brown julio jones calvin johnson mike evans has more 1000 yard seasons than these guys already and he's only played with tom brady for two of those seasons now so this man was just like that Okay, he, he just a, he's a productive wide receiver. Uh, he doesn't have an All Pro selection though. You gotta be a ooh wee to hit that All Pro, but he just been consistent, consistent, consistent. He's old cool. I don't think he's ever been viewed as the best receiver in the league or second best receiver in the league, but he's always just been consistent. All right. And I know that was a uh, big benefit to Tom when he moved down there. All right, now, y'all know Tom also played with Antonio Brown. 
play with Antonio. I'm a, I'm just gonna say 2020 and 2021. I'm not about to say that he played that one damn game in New England. That, even though they look good, that game look good. But y'all know that shit went all the way left. AB had all kind of shit going on, and you know he left there. He ended up with that little brief stint with the Raiders that wasn't even a stain suit up for him. And he eventually made his way to Tampa Bay. All right, but. With all of the bullshit AB does and stuff, man still has an impressive resume. He's a five-time All-Pro. That's four times first team. Okay. Uh, he has seven 1,000-yard seasons, led the league in catches twice, led in yards twice, led in touchdowns one time. Um, he didn't have a big year or anything like that that year with the, uh, with the Bucks. Uh, you know, he didn't play the whole year. You feel me? But he was a contributor to that Super Bowl winning team. Y'all know during that playoff run, you know, to my, uh, he did his thing and shit. I think he caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl. You feel me? Uh, but we all know how this shit ended. Everybody knows how this ended in Tampa Bay with the main taking off the uh, jersey, taking off the pads, and running off the damn field. Okay. So that's part of that's t- part of Tom Brady's story too now. Okay, when we get the Tom Brady version of The Last Dance, you know what I'm saying? I know they got some documentaries floating around right now, but, you know, we need some years going down and really get some hard-hitting shit with it. AB gonna be a part of that story. I would love to hear the unfiltered commentary from it, from uh, Tom Brady about how that shit will. You feel me? Another receiver that Tom played with down there in uh, Tampa Bay has been Chris Godwin. And you can tell that Brady really likes Chris Godwin. Shit, he damn near had about 130 targets last year. Uh, nearly caught 100 balls, you feel me? Uh, and I, I can imagine that's going to creep up even more this year with Gronk being gone, you feel me? But So he's played with Tom both in 2020 and 2021 and now going to go into the 20. 22 season. He's a one-time second team all pro. He's had two 1,000 yard seasons. So he's solid as fuck. So this I told y'all early in this thing, the cupboard was not bare when Tom Brady came on that. You know what I'm talking about? You had Mike Evans, you had Chris Godwin. Uh shit, Jameis went dumb that year uh, before Tom got there. You know what I'm saying? But Jameis couldn't see. He had the lacy. He hadn't had the LASIK surgery yet, excuse me. He couldn't fucking see. So that, that probably contributed to them 30 picks. But he had some guys, and then Brady was able to get some guys to come on down there with him as well, like Grump. And he played with uh, Leonard Fournette, okay, down there in Tampa Bay. Played with him 2020 and 2021, so in both seasons he was there. Basically, uh, shout out to the Pivot. Uh, they just had Leonard Fournette on there, dope-ass interview, and... Leonard Fournette said basically Tom Brady asked for him to come down there. You know what I'm saying? He asked for him to come down there. Oh, uh, shit. It looked like after last season that Leonard might move around and do some thing. And, and Tom Brady told him, man, fuck that shit. You know, I'm coming back. Uh, he was even looking at, Leonard Fournette was looking at New England. I can see him working in New England too. But uh, say Tom Brady called him, said, man, get your ass from up there. I'm coming back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, In his career, Leonard Fournette has had three uh, seasons of at least 1,200 scrimmage yards. People wouldn't think that because I know when he came into the league and he said this in an interview, a lot of folks were trying to act like he couldn't catch the ball. And he was like, I always could catch the ball. But just in college, we were a, a, a power running team. And that makes a lot of sense. Cause I want to say even before he got with Tom, he had a season of catching, I don't know, 60, 70 balls, something like that. Uh, but you know, Tom gonna give you the opportunity to catch that bitch. So uh, I'm looking for Leonard Fournette to be a uh, versatile guy this year uh, with the Bucks. you feel me? Uh, he, he's also had two 1,000 yard rushing seasons, but n- not with the Bucks. okay? Even though he might creep up around that. He's still young. Shit, he was just 26 last year going to his age 27 season. He might get a rack on the ground. There's no Rojo there anymore to take any of those 
carry. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. But that's what I got, y'all. That's Tom Brady's resume. Most of which you get bombarded with it all the time. But again, I told you, ain't nobody else giving you that detail in terms of the scoring defenses and the rushing offenses and all that shit. You know what I'm talking about? The man's resume is legendary. The man's career is legendary. Uh, it's the ultimate team game. Even with all those top defense and shit, if he put the defense in bad positions, uh, turning the ball, if he's a turnover monster and giving them short fields and all that shit like that, hell, you know, he, he, that goes with it as well. You know, that's like you're saying, it's the ultimate team game. Him being careful with the ball, him chewing clock, that helps the defense as well. So it all works together. All right, but it's undeniable that he has been blessed to have all those great defenses and those great defenses have been blessed to have him okay you know bill belichick didn't start off with the patriots he started out as a head coach with the cleveland browns and that shit didn't go well you know what i'm talking about uh it's, it's tough for folks to win in cleveland I, I should do something on that how various teams just just can't get right and it got to start at the top with ownership you feel me uh but when he went to New England and he was able to get full reign for real, for real, and uh, get a very support, supportive owner, uh, and Robert Kraft, and when uh, Drew Bledsoe got hurt, that boy Brad Brady came in, and they ain't looked back since. All right? So the shit undeniable, bro that he wanted them was. I think even his harshest critics, which includes me from time to time, <laughs> uh, can't deny that this motherfucker is uh, undoubtedly one of them ones, okay? But do you think that it's undeniable that the man with su seven Super Bowl victories Six with the Patriots, one with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the man with the all-time uh, record for passing yards and passing touchdowns, the man with three MVPs and hella Super Bowl MVPs and hella Pro Bowls and all that kind of shit. Uh, do y'all say, do y'all agree with the masses that it's undoubted that Tom Brady is the GOAT QB? Or does the fact that he was supported uh, by all these great defenses and uh, stellar coaching, does that sway you in it? All right? Let me know what y'all think. And I'm going to keep asking that question. And y'all need to go ahead and keep sharing and sharing and sharing and, and subscribe and tell all your partners about what we're doing over here at IG Entertainment. All right? So I'm going to keep asking the question. I'm almost done with the project, but still asking the question. Who's the GOAT QB? Put it on some. Thank you so much for watching my daddy's YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, and turn on your post notifications. Okay, how do I do it?